Hey guys, back with another video. Today we're discussing APIs and how you can access an API using Microsoft Excel. So for a long time now, accessing APIs was a privilege for those who knew how to code, but today you can actually do it using simple Microsoft Excel. APIs, what are they? So we'll discuss what they are, how they're a really common technology now and why you should learn it. So without further ado, let's make a start. Web APIs, so we're gonna look at a definition first and understand what types of APIs exist out there. Just look at a bit of theory before we get started. So what exactly is an API? What does it stand for? An API stands for Application Programming Interface. Essentially, it's a means by which two machines can talk to each other and exchange data between each other. Typically, a machine on our side would be our laptop or a desktop machine would run an API call fetching data from another machine, in this case, a computer server. So we'd fetch data from the API, it would then return the data that we want to see. But likewise, the opposite is also true. You can also run a push request, a post request, uh, as it's more technically known, in which you can push data to an API as well. So APIs work in both ways. There are a means by which two machines can talk to each other. Now, types of APIs, there are different types of APIs in regards to ownership. The first is public, which anyone can access. We'll look at one today. An open API requires no security. A restricted API, on the other hand, requires a key or a token, an access token, also short for oath. Oath here being authentication. So you'll come across these and we'll look at a restricted API in a future session. And then you've got two more, you've got private APIs. These usually exist between parties, typically where there's a vendor or a seller relationship between a buyer and a seller or, or a, a one organization with another organization. And these aren't visible to me or you. And then finally, partner APIs. These are usually between companies, between firms, um, and they exist as a third type. Now, there's also protocols as well for APIs. And a protocol is a mechanism so think of it as a mechanism or as a framework there's there's a there's a few different big protocols uh, but there's two primarily the first is rest so rest is short for representational state transfer it's the most common api protocol today and we'll look at them shortly uh, in this session the other one which is the new kid on the block which is graphql these these are a new generation of apis originally developed by facebook but released into the uh, open source open source environment, and today they are very much the cutting edge of API technologies, and we'll cover them in a future session. A more legacy one is SOAP. Um, SOAP APIs are largely legacy, and they're still used by a few large enterprises. But the in short summary, the most majority of use cases you'll find is a REST API that you're dealing with. So it's good to become familiar with the REST APIs and how they work. And that's it. So now let's dive in. Let's have a look at a example API uh, or some APIs that exist out there on the web. So we're in Google right now. We're going to look for a list of public APIs. Now you can search for these just randomly on Google or you can go to GitHub who actually have a catalog of free APIs that exist out there. So I'm going to search for GitHub uh, GitHub APIs, and the second result here will show you that list. So here, let's take a look at this. If we scroll down, you can see public APIs. You can see in total they've got 1,425 APIs uh, across 51 different categories. Let's have a look at some of these. So you've got all sorts. You've got like APIs for animals, animal facts rather, books, blockchain, entertainment you can find apis on the film and movie industry food and drink and nutritional information that exists out there all sorts like shopping you can even get apis now on finance stock markets that kind of thing so a description here is given for each one of these apis here we're under the animal category you've got the api name a description and here this tells you whether or not it's an oath as in whether it's a private, openly private or restricted uh, API. If it means no, it means it's essentially an entirely open, non-restricted API. 
Uh, we'll come on to these later, but that's what essentially what you're looking for. Um, and yeah, you're free to roam around, have a look at these different APIs. They are very different, you know, they're structured slightly differently, but the documentation behind a lot of these APIs is there for you. But today we're going to use an example R like. We're going to use a API that I really like called Random Data API. So let's have a look at this API. Essentially, this is a website. Remember, APIs are essentially websites and a website by which you can generate user data, random user data. So the way it works is you can run a script like this. It returns data like this. But what we want to do is understand this a bit better. We're going to look at documentation. So you want to click on V2. Don't worry about V1, V2. And here you can see you're given a base URL. This is essentially our anchor point. We need to call on this. Um, and then we need to set a parameter. So parameters are categories, if you like. So here within this API itself, you can see you've got a set list of parameters. You've got users, addresses, banks, appliances, beers, blood types, credit cards. So any one of these would return a random credit card data, random bit of data on banks, random piece of data on users, you name it. So we essentially want to query users. So we want a random set of user data. And typically people would use this just to do software testing or application testing. And this is the trick. You can actually run an API call within your browser. This is what many people don't realize. So if you take this base URL, copy it, create, open a new tab, paste that in, it will return, ah, this one didn't exist. It's because we're missing our parameter. So we add our parameter. So our parameter is, remember, users. So we're going to take this here. I'll type it in rather. So if we type that in, users, and I'm going to add a forward slash. Let's just see what that does. That has now given us one user. So this is data for one user. So we've successfully run our first, very first API call. So here you can see it comes with an ID field. It comes with a user ID field, comes with a password, first name. Again, remember, this is a random user profile. It's created randomly with essentially fake data. You can use this to populate and create your own um, application records uh, or database, whatever you prefer. So here we've got uh, someone named Andrea Mueller or Muller, and we've got some, we've got a nice populated set of data here that we can use for this profile. Again, we can go back and change a parameter. So let's say I want to change it to credit cards. So if you go back to your uh, URL and just en enter credit cards, I think it's credit cards like this. We need to double check. Let's just be sure of this. Yes, credit underscore cards. Hit enter. That's running a, a get request. And here we can now see a random uh, record or a random record for a credit card. So you can see the credit card number, the credit card expiry date, the credit card type, it's a solo card. So this is really good. This is a clean API as far as I'm concerned. You can run this in your own web browser, but we actually want to start pulling this data into a spreadsheet. So before we move on, one last thing we're gonna do um, is uh, we're going to copy our base URL, open up a notepad, we're going to make a save of our base URL. And remember, we're going to do users. So I'm just going to write type users like this. So let's move on. Next next part in our example. Here. So guys, I want you to open up a new spreadsheet in Microsoft Excel. And I want you to look for the data tab. And you're looking for these options right here. So where it says get data from web, text, CSV. You're looking for these options. These options come from a new feature or new platform within uh, an extension within Microsoft Excel known as Power Query. And in order for you to have this, you're going to need the latest version of Excel. So uh, anything newer than Microsoft Excel 2016. If you don't have these options, fear not, you can actually get them by searching for Power Query uh, add in Excel. And this first result will take you to Microsoft's website, web page, and you can actually download it right here. Select your language and just click download. 
and that will give you the add-in for, for this example that we're going to go through. So back to Excel, I want you to go, once you've got this, I want you to go to the data tab and click from web. Now, this is where we need to enter our base URL. So it offers you two options, stick with basic. But we're going to do something a bit different. We're just going to enter our URL here, our base URL. But this will only return one record, so one user record. We need, th we need, we want to generate a few. So if we go back to the documentation for the API, so if you go to random API, there's always a documentation behind every API. You can see here, it gives us an example. And right at the end here, something quite different to what we have. It's got users question mark size equals two. That essentially means we'll generate two records and we want more than one record. So ignore this last part for now. So I'm gonna take this and this will now be our new base URL. I'm going to paste it over here. So now our parameters, our parameter is users, question mark, size 2. I'm going to make it size 3. So we generate three records. Click OK. That will then initiate Power Query. Now, this may look new to you. Don't worry. Ignore the error message at the top. We've actually got three records successfully here. You can see our applied steps as we move through this query editor. On, our, on the right here. What we want to do is move this into a table. That will then ask us how we want to split this up uh, to a table. We just take the default, click OK. That will then create a new column here, column one. So what we want to do is expand down into these records. We want to see all the fields behind them. Click on this box here of two opposite facing arrows. Left click on that. That will then bring up all the fields that sit behind these records. So here we've got ID, UID, password, first name, last name. These are all of our random user generated uh, data fields. Untick this um, and that, essentially what this does, it'll keep the names that we see here for our field values and click OK. So now what you'll see is you'll see all the fields appear. So here we've got three rows of records, three records, and we've got columns stretching all the way across. You've got first name, last name, email, so on and so forth. But as you get to employment, address, and credit card, something interesting happens. You'll see it says record. Now, the reason why it says record is because if we click on employment here, the field employment, we actually see it's got two further columns. So a column called employment has another food, two further columns. And that's because this is a nested data um, set. So what we're looking at here is JSON data. JSON data is often nested. It's layered upon layered. So we want to expand this down. To do that, we again click on this box here of two opposite facing arrows. It'll show us the two fields that we want and click OK. That will then expand the employment field and give us a title and a key skill. So this is great. This is what we want. We want to kind of expand and drill down on all these. So I'm going to do the same here. Here you can see under address, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fields. Click OK, expand on those. Credit card, we've got one field, only one field. And subscription, we've got four fields. Perfect. So now we've drilled down all of our data. You can see all the steps we've gone through. You can go right back to the source if you like. But you can see all the steps that we've taken to try and get down to this view that we have here. So now you can see, we go all the way right, you can see we've got many, many columns now. And we're almost ready to go. So what we'll now do is click close and load. Take the uh, left click on the first option. And that will finally bring our data into a table in Excel. We can now close this. And we can now see we've finally got a what looks like a really nice table in Excel, stretching across um, quite a few columns here. And we've got all the data that we want for free users. Now, if we want to build on this, we can go back through, run our, rerun our query, generate more records if we want. If we wanted to um, now transform this a bit more, we can put this data into a pivot table. We can slice and dice it, filter it, you name it. But we finally managed to get some data from an API into Microsoft Excel. Uh, and only with a few steps. So guys, that's it. That's the end of the session. I hope you've enjoyed it.
Next time, guys, I'm going to cover the same topic and we're going to look at APIs, but this time using Python code and how you can use some really handy libraries and packages that exist out there for Python that allow you to query APIs. And we'll also take a look at more variety, a different variety of APIs, including those which are private APIs that require access keys. So do follow along. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you do, please like, comment and subscribe. Thank you.